Hello, hello, hello. Amphrodite here, your pop culture psychic. So today we're doing something new for most of you, but old for some of you who've been following me for a long time. So I used to do celebrity astrology birth chart readings, um, and I used to have birth charts available. I do not anymore, but I did think it would be fun to do these again. So um, today um, we are going to be doing James Charles' uh, birth chart reading. Astrology birth chart reading. So um, James had a recent YouTube video called, let me see if I get the right title, Zodiac Sign Makeup Challenge. Okay. And he talked about how he didn't really believe in astrology and he wasn't really sure of it, which I was kind of like, girl, I'm going to teach you. But I figured this would be a really great time to kind of go over astrology and kind of teach a little bit about it. Now, I am not an expert on astrology, but it has been a hobby of mine since I was 12. Thanks, Sailor Moon. Um, it has helped me um, to learn a lot about myself. So it, one of my favorite things about astrology is that it gives you the information about you or maybe someone else that you can kind of adjust to. So like, for instance, if you don't know why you're mad at someone and what's bothering you about them, sometimes you can find that out. Sometimes why you guys can't agree. For instance, if someone has a Mars and Taurus, they are stubborn when they're angry. They just say the same thing over and over again and they lose the ability to listen. So you have to stop arguing and then go back to it the next day and have a calm conversation. Some people who have Mars and Aries, for instance, just like to argue it out, get it over with right then and there, and then they're over it. Not everyone's going to be able to do that. So there are certain things like that when it comes to astrology that kind of help you understand yourself and other people and how to kind of adjust. Um, I did this because I was lonely and had no friends and I was wondering why no one liked me when I was younger and also why, um, you know, how I can kind of get along with people better. So self-discovery at freaking 12. Um, hashtag old soul. Anyways, so um, in James Charles's video, he kind of talked about how he feels like he connects with uh, Gemini a lot, but then in some things he doesn't. Um, so there are a few things I want to go over. First of all, he was talking about horoscopes. Now, horoscopes are a little bit iffy. It's kind of like the fluff. Um, it's kind of like the entertaining, you know, beginning thing to kind of get you into it. A lot of them aren't really like super serious. A lot of them are just for fun. Some of them, whatever, depending on the publication, some of them are BS. Um, I can tell you what I do. Um, uh, is I do a weekly and monthly spread on my Instagram um, of like the energy of the month, the energy of the week, um, and kind of what to kind of expect and some of the pitfalls and things like that. Just in general, what I feel is coming. Um, and I feel like that's kind of similar to like what a horoscope would be. Um, I do that with tarot. Um, but um, anyways, he, the only thing that sucked about that video is he didn't tell us his birth time. He got his birth time and didn't give it to us. So we don't have the full chart. So James Charles, if you're watching this, hit me up with that birth time, girl, and I'll give you some information. But um, we do have everything else. We have his birth date. Um, so um, as you guys know, with an astrology chart, you can only get half the chart when you don't have their birth time. Now I am using um, uh, information here that is just simple. It's just kind of fun and try to give you some information real quick and easy. You know, one, two, skidoo. Um... That being said, I do want to go over a few things, and so I'm, I'm looking at the chart now. So the first thing I want to tell you is your sun is your ego and sense of identity. So that's going to be a very important thing. Now, if we did have the birth time, we would get an ascendant, which is the mask you wear in public, the first thing people see. The moon is your emotions. That's what your emotions get filtered through. The mercury is your communication. Venus is love, beauty, relationship, a little bit of money. Mars is passion, sex, aggression. Um, Jupiter is luck and expansion. Now... For a personal chart, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and even Pluto, those are all generational planets. It means that they take longer to move, so those all affect your entire generation um, or a certain period of time, certain amount of years, a block of years. So they don't particularly – It's not, the information is, like, super important or specific, uh, like, to you as a person. It's more of, like, the people that you grew up with. Um, however, the – where they are in your chart, the house that they're in, it is. Um, we don't have that. So um, Lilith, in my opinion, uh, just because of, of the, what I'm using right here, it's just what I had on hand. Lilith is not that important. This is an asteroid. I haven't found it to be that important. Um, and then North Node here is your life path. So this one is really, really important for a lot of people who are confused and lost in life. You definitely want to look at your North Node and where it is to kind of see some of the things that you're going to naturally bounce around in. Uh, I can tell you for me, uh, if you are interested in my chart, I have it somewhere on my website. Um, I have a north node um, in Capricorn in the first house. Um, so Capricorn is like uh, typical of people, north node in Capricorn, those people typically are entrepreneurs or, or they need to be their own boss and a lot of them establish things. Um, and then obviously I have it in the first house, house of self, I have to be put first, put myself first. Um, a lot of us have a little bit more of a lonely solo life path. <laughs> Shocker. Um, hashtag forever single. Um, so anyways, that's just kind of like a little breakdown of this. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about is like 
James didn't connect a lot with Gemini, and there's a reason for that. I believe the biggest reason are his are two placements right off the bat: his Moon in Virgo, okay, and his um, Mars in Libra. So we will really focus on those. But why don't we just start? So the Sun, Ego, and Sense of Identity, right? Gemini. I'm a Gemini. So Geminis are known for being very quick-witted, very smart, very funny, jack of all trades, master of none. You're not going to find a Gemini who's the best at one thing. They always have a lot of eggs in a basket. They start things and don't finish them. They talk a lot. Um, and they're known as the social butterfly. That doesn't mean that they can't be introverts. It just means that they know how to turn it on when they need to. Um, and even if they don't, when they have a connection with someone, they turn into that person that is very vocal and that is very talkative. Even if it's just that one person, it's like they naturally go into that. Gemini rules communication. So um, one of the things that gets uh, – one of the things that Geminis fall into in terms of traps is they have a hard time – being vulnerable. Gemini thinks that emotions are for ugly people. They don't like to be vulnerable. They don't want to be held down. They want to be flighty and they want to go all over the place. So a lot of times they struggle with being authentic all the time to everyone. Surface level connections a lot of times is what you'll see Gemini's fall into. Like, oh, I just want you to know this about me. I just want to be like this. Like, we're the friends that have fun, but then when sh like shit really hits the fan, I'm going to be by myself. You know, like Gemini's are known to cry by themselves, not in front of other people. So like one of the things, which we'll get into more with your moon sign because your moon sign is where your emotions are going to lie, but just to give you a little bit of an oversight here. Um, but anyways, a lot of times you'll you'll feel like I don't, I, you're like especially Scorpio. Scorpios will always think that Geminis are fake when they first meet them. And that's why people are like, oh, Geminis are two-faced. No, it's because there's a defensive mechanism where they're not, not going to show you everything and they're going to dazzle you with their words and their knowledge and their fun facts and this weird quirk that they have and this weird information that they have, this Snapple cap thing that they remembered from four years ago, this fact that they're good at games. They like puzzles, you know. They are usually like to read or write, you know. They're very, you know, they have love knowledge. They, they love knowledge. You're looking at Gemini for intellect, knowledge, understanding, things like that. Um, they do rule communication. So one of the things that frustrates me, and I think this frustrated Gem, uh, James as well, is that people say that Geminis are two-faced. No. So the reason people say that Geminis are two-faced is because they have – the Gem Gemini is represented by the twins, so there are two personalities in there, quote unquote, which means that they have a switch. So you'll have you have they that's Gemini's adapt to survive. That's literally what they are made to do. They are made to adapt, and so being able to adapt means that they can switch between the twins. So instead of thinking that there's like two people in there, quote unquote, it's that this this twin that's in front of me has a certain amount of things that they can do that they're good at. These are their skill sets, but the other twin, when I switch, has these skill sets. So that's why they're able to be good at pretty much anything, but not great at anything, is because both twins make up for what the other twin lacks. That's why you see Gemini's double talk, say one thing and do another. That's why you see them uh, like one thing and then not like it all of a sudden, because they are the sign of the twins. So there's literally two of them in there, and they're switching. Um, now, one of the things that you'll spot with a Gemini right away, and you'll notice this with me, but for me, it's a little bit easier because I have Mercury in Gemini. I think Trisha Paytas has Mercury in Gemini as well. Which is why she talks so fast, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, but Geminis talk really quickly. They're very, very quick. They think on their toes. They're very, very good at improv, things like that. And so with Geminis, you just talk, 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 talk. And sometimes they can bombard people with energy. When you're looking at someone who's like a Taurus, they're very slow. They don't want to move. They don't want to, like, it just takes them a while. A lot of Tauruses just need to sit down in their feelings and write them out or think about them. But a Gemini is literally going to be like, oh my God, like, I am just going to bombard you all this information. Sometimes they can sort of like hit people over the head with stuff like that. Um, that's why you see a lot of Geminis uh, gravitating towards uh, signs that are quicker, like Aries, for instance, who's very quick, 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 quick. Um, now, I'm not going to lie to you. Geminis are the best at shit talking. If you want someone who's going to say the funniest stuff when they're like talking crap about someone, if you want a sign that is known to gossip, you're going to be looking at Geminis. However, they always have a plus one on their side, and there's always everyone listening to them. They are not the only ones doing this. Other people are helping them. And Libras, you guys are the number one sign to be their peanut gallery. So low-functioning Geminis will talk a lot of crap about you. They will. However, they're talking crap about everyone else and themselves. 
you will probably not find a Gemini that wouldn't tell you that in person as well. It's rare that a Gemini has the fear to not confront or to be confronted because they like to mental spar with people. They'll test you. So sometimes they're literally talking crap because they want to see if you'll come back and say something. So that is something that they do do. Typically, it's when they have a fire sign in their Mars or something that's making them want to go after you or whatever the case may be. Um, Now, uh, when it comes to social media, Gemini's are definitely the best. So it does not surprise me. Uh, A lot of people um, with uh, influencer careers will have Gemini in the 10th house of career, or they'll have a north node in Gemini, or they'll have a north node in the third house, or they will have their sun in Gemini or their moon in Gemini. This is a very prominent, common thing. Some of them do have Mars in Gemini as well because that is their passion. You will see Gemini energy flourish here. Another sign that flourishes here, Leo. However, I've noticed with social media, Gemini trumps Leo there because Leos just like the applause. Um, A lot of Leos will gravitate more towards something like Instagram. Um, But for these jack of all trades, you're going to be seeing a lot of Gemini energy, a lot of like influencer energy. Um, So let's just go ahead and move on to the moon. So the moon is your emotion. So this is the big one. So when, when I first got into astrology, I was like, eh. I was just like James. I was like, eh. You know, because I am I have a healthy level of skepticism, and I totally think it's valid to have skepticism. Again, I wouldn't believe half the crap that, exper- that I've experienced if I didn't experience it myself, so I get it. But for me, my, my I and mean, this is what I tell people, it's like, you know you. You know your soul, and your soul is your emotions. So you'll know your moon sign and connect to your moon sign more than any other sign, 100%. And... I was like, eh, I don't really know. I'm not really like Gemini. My brother's a Gemini, and I feel like we're polar opposites. Me and my brother are polar opposites. So I was like, so how are we both Geminis? Girl, when I found I have an Aries moon, my brother had a Libra moon, which is literally polar opposite signs, <laughs> it clicked. Um, and I think this is the same for anyone. So I always tell people, like, you're going to connect with your emotions. When you first meet someone, you'll see your ascendant. You'll be like, oh, this person's fine, whatever, with their ascendant or whatever their ascendant is. And then you'll get to know them. You'll be like, oh, that's their son, their ego, okay, so whatever. And then you'll get to really know them and become their best friend. And then you see their moon, and that's their core, their soul. So um, for James, he has a moon in Virgo. This is a very difficult placement to have. This placement is so difficult that it's insane. Um, I have never met a moon in Virgo that didn't have anxiety. Um, the ones that don't have anxiety will eventually, from what I've experienced, get it. (laughs) Um, Because Moon and Virgo cannot let things go. They remember everything, and they will be very specific about that. Virgo energy is very, like, perfectionist. So when it comes to their emotions, they want to project the best image of themselves. They want their emotions to make sense. They're going to like always think about their emotions all the time and how this affected this person, how that affects that person. These people get paranoid easily because they'll be like, oh, well, if they're doing this, this, and this, and this is the pattern of behavior, so they're going to act like this. And I've done this, this, and this, and that's my pattern of behavior, so are you doing this? That paranoia and it gets gets in their head and makes them feel some type of way, and then they get anxiety. Um, also, because of they're the sign of the perfectionist, they're gonna hold themselves to an absolutely ridiculous standard, one hundred percent. I mean, Moon and Virgos are very like it's gonna be like this, and it's gonna be like this, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make sure I do that. That's my that's how I feel it. And they're gonna do the same to other people. You need to do this. Da, 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 da. They hold other people to a ridiculous standard. This is why those of you with Venus in Virgo are impossible to please in relationships and struggle. with with like letting things just like naturally slide. And this is why people with Mars and Virgo sometimes can bully people without realizing it with their word choice because Virgo is very perfectionist based. Now, high functioning moon in Virgo, picture perfect memory, literally doesn't forget anything, is very organized, neat, puts everything together, makes sure that they're good at editing and make sure everything looks nice and make sure this, this makes sense, right? We see James Charles very good at editing his photos, very good at editing his stuff, very good at, you know, his job, and make sure that everything is perfect and the lines are right and everything like that. Like, it's very clear, like, he's got his perfect aesthetic. Like, it's very clear that he's a perfectionist. Whether or not he realizes that, I don't know. So one of the things that people will get frustrated about is, like, Gemini, remember what I said about Gemini, they leave things, um, they start things and leave them to be unfinished. Because he has a moon in Virgo, and this is why you look at a full chart, because certain things technically, quote-unquote, I guess the best way to describe this is, like, cancel each other out, the moon in Virgo is going to trump that Gemini trait. Um, Not all of the Gemini traits, that specific trait will get trumped by the moon in Virgo, because the moon in Virgo is like, hey, bitch, I'm getting this shit together. I want this to be look amazing. I want this to feel amazing. I want everyone to see every perfect instance of this, and I'm putting a ridiculous amount of effort into this. Um, he's lucky that he has that moon in Virgo for that instance because it allows him to have more of a work ethic. Um, Geminis are not known for the work ethic, so having this moon in Virgo will kind of put that into perspective for him and push him harder. Um, now, low functioning, when he's upset and he's mad or whatever, he's going to nitpick and, and kind of be very picky and specific. Um, 
again, I, I've warned you Virgos about this. When people have Ascendant in Virgos, you guys have resting bitch face. And Moon in Virgo, sometimes they don't realize it because their standards are so high. They don't realize how they come across. And sometimes when that Moon is Virgo, Moon's in Virgo, when you're emotional, they're happy, sad, mad, whatever, sometimes it's going to be a little bit difficult for people to understand where you're coming from. This is why we see him the way he is. And we'll get into his Mars sign in particular because that's his big issue that he has to work on. It's retrograde for a reason. Um, but when it comes to Moon and Virgo, they have to learn to help people rather than tell people what to do or what they want. So it's like, instead of being like, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, it should be like, I did this, this, and this, and it really worked for me. And I think that that would work for you. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like that. That's whack. Da, da, da. Well, I would do it this way. Do you see how it changes the constructive criticism? This goes to themselves and other people because I guarantee every moon in Virgo that's ever said something to someone else that they didn't like, they've said something 10 times worse to themselves. They are their own worst enemy and they their standards are too high. They need to relax and breathe and everything needs to be perfect. Um, now, what I love about moon in Virgos is that they always grow up to be people who are able to um, articulate themselves in a way that uh exudes like or commands the attention so like you'll see a moon in virgo as someone that's like i've walked the walk and i've talked the talk again not surprised considering what he's gone through he'll get here he's very young so he'll grow into this and you do see a lot of them get into managerial positions a lot of people with moon in virgo are really good at personal assistance girl i want a personal assistant I'm not there just yet, but I'm real close. And I've already said, girl, I am looking for a moon in Virgo. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, they are very on with their stuff. Um, now, one of the other issues he's going to have with his moon in Virgo is when he is trying to connect with, especially with a boy, right, when it comes to romance. <sighs> Sometimes the warmth is not felt with a moon in Virgo. Think of the well, think of Virgo as like a finger, like a, a finger wag. Like you shouldn't have done that. Sometimes when the moon is in Virgo, they have to just like breathe, and they just have to be more sensitive, be more patient, be more emotional, be more vulnerable. These two signs together, Gemini and Virgo, are not known for their vulnerability. These are like the two worst signs when it comes to being vulnerable and when it comes to showing that you are sensitive. These are why he struggles with that. He will grow into this. He will get out of this phase. I used to be very defensive when I was younger and very, 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 very rebellious. Holy crap, was I rebellious. It's insane. Um, and I grew into my empathy and I grew into my emotional intelligence. And I think he'll get there as well. Um, it's just when he's connecting to people, they're, they're not going to feel it initially and he does have to sometimes compensate for the fact that he's coming across in a little bit more of like a specific or like a um, nitpicky way well, again this is a br breaking down of how they treat themselves because um, i'm telling you no matter how hard you are on james charles he's harder on himself um, you'll never meet a moon in virgo that isn't obsessed with um, making themselves a better person or you know self uh, what's the word um uh like uh self like bettering themselves or whatever. I, I can't think of the exact word but um self-improvement there it is they're obsessed with that i've known a lot of moon and virgos who like used to read books when they were younger about like you know how to be a better person or you know life hack for this or that and the other um so let's move on um we can talk about that again later so his mercury's in taurus Whew, child okay i'm not gonna lie to you this is probably my least favorite mercury placement okay Mercury is communication, and Taurus is not known for being swift. Taurus is very slow, sturdy, stern, and stubborn. They're consistent, which means his Mercury, his communication style, consistent. You kind of know what to expect from him. You kind of know what he's going to say. You know what he's going to do. He is pretty stubborn with his word choices. We have seen that multiple times he's stubborn with some of the things that he said it doesn't mean that they can't adjust and it doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to evolve it doesn't mean they can't get things they take longer mercury and taurus what did i say when it comes to communication one of the worst signs to to one of the worst placements um, to have when it comes to expressing yourself it's going to come out inarticulate think of teresa uh, Judice from the Real Housewives of New Jersey. She is a Taurus, and she's a prime example of this. Candy Burris from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Taurus, prime example of this. Inarticulate. 
Taurus energy does not have the quickness, okay, that it needs. This is going to frustrate James to no end. His ego and sense of identity is quick. His moon is very specific, okay? His emotions are very specific. So it's like, I'm very quick. I, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to do it right now. I, okay, I have the whole plan out. It's right here. And then as soon as he goes to release it, that's what Mercury's for, it's all shit. That is the problem is because it's being projected through Mercury, which is sitting in Taurus, which is awful at articulating. So in his mind, he's going to get more and more defensive. He's like, no, that's not what I said. I actually meant this. No, that's not what I mean. I mean this. And he's being honest, but no one's understanding it because Mercury and Taurus needs to sit down, breathe, plan out the things right, wait, get all sides of the story, and then put it out. This is why No More Lies did so well for him because he was able to sit there and really wait. He is not going to be someone who's going to be understood when it is immediate like when he has that immediate reaction he will not be understood and the problem is is that he's not going to always be wrong it's going to look that way with taurus um they're also sometimes slow to um hop on things um Again, this is frustrating because we see the sun in Gemini, which is like, I kind of understand this. I know I understand this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But then the Mercury in Taurus throws it out there and it's half-assed, quote unquote, which triggers the moon in Virgo, which is a perfectionist, or he only got one piece of it. Again, this is the Mercury in Taurus. It's being projected into the world in a messed up way. Now, the great thing about Mercury and Taurus is, again, they're very, very, very consistent. So when it comes to having a proper opinion, they're not going to waver. So once they get it right, they don't get it wrong again. So that's the great part about Mercury, Mercury and Taurus. Like once he understands something, oh baby, he understands it. It's not going to happen again. Okay. He gets it. Um, we'll get to his Mars and Libra in a second. But this is a frustrating placement. I have seen so many people with Mercury and Taurus so frustrated because people don't give them the benefit of the doubt with the, what they're talking about, which is fair. I mean, it is their job to understand and articulate themselves better. But I'm telling you, that is what Mercury and Taurus is known for. It's known for inarticulation, okay? Um, now, they're also pretty good because uh, Taurus rules uh, money uh, and it rules more of like physical things. So when Mercury's in Taurus, um, they're usually pretty good at taking an idea and making money from it or talking uh, about, you know, the way to gain status from something or gain success from something. Um, and you're usually going to see Mercury and Taurus as someone that's uh, pretty good at um, following something through all the way uh, when it comes to a thought process or when it comes to you know something that they're they want to do um, some signs like mercury in an air sign will say something and not do it again great this is great because naturally gemini's will say something and not do it again another indicator because he has an earth sign here that will allow him to actually project that all the way through it softens some of that gemini flighty energy which by the way gemini's are freaking known for being extremely flirty they are expert flirts i did not talk about this i forgot um, to mention this gemini's are expert flirts they love to flirt okay and gemini's are 100 percent eternal bachelors and bachelorettes they are so difficult to pin down they are commitment phobes okay because guess what you're gonna have to chase them they're not gonna chase you they don't have to they have options always um okay so let's uh kind of uh break down uh some of these other placements um again there's probably some more information you can get on each one of these. I'm just trying to tailor it to some of the things that I've noticed about James. Uh, so Venus. Venus is love, beauty, uh, relationship, and even a little bit of money. So um, one of the things that you need to understand with Venus and Cancer, and this is going to touch on money a little bit for him, Cancer is a nurturer. It's an emotional thing, right? And it's a caretaker. So my biggest fear with a Venus and Cancer for him is about becoming a caretaker for his family. That's a huge burden on him that uh, I don't know if – he'll be ready for. Um, and I also see Venus and Cancers a lot of times, especially if they come into money from success, they do take on caretaker positions. And so he has to be careful when it comes to friends and paying for friends stuff, when it comes to you know family and paying for family stuff, the expectations of you paying for things or you taking care of people, nurturing them, making them feel good. Like when it comes to friends, he has to be careful about that. He has to be very, very careful about that because love can come from a friendship as well and not always romance. And he is the type of person where 
and he'll grow into this. Again, he's going to grow into these a lot of these traits. They're not things that are just going to manifest right off the bat. Um, but his Venus and Cancer, he's going to get in, in connections where he is feeling sorry for people or having a ton of empathy, especially when it comes to boys, okay? You're not going to convince me that the boys that he's connected with are not sad boys. That is his type. He's going to fall for sad boy e-boy 100% because Cancer is like, oh, my poor baby, let me nurture you. Let me make you feel better. Can I buy you something? Can I give you a hug? How are you feeling? How are you? Like, he's going to want to do that once he gets past the initial phase of, of being passive aggressive which we'll get into is mars and libra okay once he gets past the you know crap talking the shit talking with the gemini because they like a mental spar and he falls into like the love section of a relationship he's gonna fall for these people that do have some sort of brokenness or that do want to feel loved or want to feel nurtured and he's gonna find himself in the nurturing position um i don't think he's been in a full-blown relationship yet so he's probably only seen glimpses of this year or there but once he gets into one he'll see the position he falls into um he's going to melt. Uh, boys will easily make him melt in that instance, and he has to be careful to not get taken advantage of. Um, again, I think that some of these we've seen like the beginning of it, and he's either dodged it or ran or anything like that, um, but uh, that worries me um, because he's only going to be his most vulnerable in a relationship. Um, and when he gets in like a serious relationship, he's going to be extremely vulnerable and he's going to unload like everything that he's been holding in because he has a lot of placements that will hold everything in. And it definitely sees like it, this energy is like afraid to trust. And so he'll put his trust into his loved ones a hundred percent. Um, and so he'll take that pain even worse. You know, cancer is so sensitive. Um, now, uh, when it comes to being like loved or anything like that, for him, um, being there for him emotionally, asking about his emotions, um, doing something that he would normally do when it comes to caretaking positions, that's going to win him over in the long run. Um, uh, this is something, again, he's going to grow into. Uh, Venus and Cancer, they're going to end up with people who are highly empathetic, maybe even an empath, someone who's very emotional, very kind, gentle, and caring. Um, they're Sometimes I've seen Venus and Cancer be attracted to people who know how to cook or people who are our chefs. I've seen that very often. Um, it's more so someone who is utilizing emotion in the proper way rather than being emotional, being sad, being depressed, being lonely, you know, whatever, feel sorry for me, woe is me. Those are the traps that he has to walk out of. Um, so let's go into his Mars placement. So this is his biggest problem in his entire chart. This is literally his number one problem. It's going to be his problem in relationship. It's going to be a problem with boys, problem with friendships, problem with the internet, whatever. Mars and Libra. I have never met a Mars and Libra that wasn't an internet troll. Okay? You guys love to poke the bear. Okay? And I will not stand for y'all pretending that you don't. You literally love to poke the bear. They like to get a rise out of people. Libra is literally the scales. They see both sides to everything. And in seeing both sides to everything, you play the best devil's advocate that could ever exist. Not only are you guys going to be indecisive when it comes to um, what you really want to put your weight behind um, and like uh, when it comes to opinions, um, you're going to purposely be indecisive. That way you can be like, well, I mean, I could be like this, but I'm also like this. Well, I could do this. and I could also Libras drive me crazy when it comes to astrology. Libra placements and Libras, you'll drive me crazy. Yeah, I'm like that, but I'm also like this, but I'm also like this. Girl, you can't be everything at once, okay? And that is Mars and Libra energy. Now, here's a few things I'll tell you about. First of all, a Mars and Libra being passionate about makeup is not surprising to me at all. Libra, totally going to be ruling beauty and love and makeup. Makes so much sense, right? And then we're seeing the Mars, which is passion, sex, aggression. Mars and Libra, oh my God, totally loves to piss people off. There is no, you're not going to, you're not going to convince me allegedly for entertainment purposes only. You are not convincing me that he doesn't do things on purpose on the internet to piss people off. He likes to get a rise out of people. I'm telling you he does. He'll probably love to like bitch at people in real life and like poke at them and like tease them. Relationships, he's going to love that like passive aggressive teasing, like shit talk. That's Mars and Libra. I want to be passive aggressive to you. I want to get a rise out of you. I want to see what makes you tick. I want to poke around. I want to figure you out. That's what they like to do. Okay? The, those are the lower functioning qualities of the Mars and Libra. When the Mars and Libra is high functioning, they're very fair, balanced, equal. They bring harmony to everything that they're around. They bring a peace, serenity. They see both sides to everything in a positive way. 
he'll grow into this. He's young with a Mars and Libra, and it's also retrograde, which means that he doesn't have a great handle on it. And when a planet's retrograding, means it slows down almost to a halt, like it's moving backwards. So when a planet is retrograde, it's like you have extra work to do on it sometimes. For him, properly standing up for himself, Mars and Libras, when they're younger, got walked all over on. And so as an adult, they don't want that to ever happen, which is why some of the traits that they have uh, manifest. Um, and Mars and Libra sometimes doesn't know how and when is proper to defend themselves because you think Aries aggressive, opposite Libra, a little bit more soft. Um, they are also a, a, the partnership sign. So Mars and Libra is a team player. Um, 100%. I think he mentioned that in his video. Mars and Libra does like to work with other people. Now, his is retrograde, which means he might like to work with other people, but it doesn't mean that other people want to work with him or work well with him uh, because he doesn't sometimes realize where he's bouncing around. Um, he'll grow into this. He'll figure it out. Um, he'll overstep. He'll step on toes. Uh, Libra is uh, the sign of justice, so when someone does something that he feels is an injustice, he'll take it to the nth degree. Sometimes it's his own moral, moral thing. Sometimes it's a real thing that everyone agrees on, so you'll see that happen. Um, you'll also see Mars and Libra as someone who, uh, how do I put this? They like everything and nothing at once. So when it comes to their passions, um, it makes sense, like I said, that he likes, you know, makeup and stuff. But when it comes to their passions, how do I word this? They, it's not that they're biters because I know everyone's going to be like, oh my God, biters. It's not that. It's that they like that too but they like what other people like because libra is a people pleaser okay um and libra is a very important placement to be on point with trends and so mars and libra doesn't surprise me because he might be interested in things but he'll figure out when other people are interested in them or passionate about them and that's why you see him like jump on the bandwagon it's not that he wasn't into that it's that he can kind of keep the pace of when's the time to strike that's why libra energy is a good placement again for people who are influencers because they'll see when the rise is up because libra is where you're looking for like what people are loving right now like leo is like what people like to look at but libra is like what people are interested in like ooh, ooh i've noticed this there's also been a shift in my opinion of like leo energy to libra energy with like some of the stuff that we're going through in the social things and things like that and like and we're going through in society, I've been noticing Libra is more prominent uh, to what, like, as a trend. Um, so, yeah, you'll see that. Um, now, when it comes to sex, I will tell you Libras are usually more of a submissive sign. Um, but Libra is known as a switch because they like everything. They like, on both things at once. So I like everything at once. Um, so um, sexually wise, uh, sexual wise, um, they usually will try uh most things um they're usually more open towards that but you will typically see them more submissive that doesn't mean that they're always a submissive person it means that they attract dominance so when you attract dominance you're gonna end up being more submissive um <clears throat> last thing i'll say mars and libra like i said when they're angry like to poke at people, like to play devil's advocate, like to get a rise out of people, um, and they will li play willfully ignorant or naive um, and stupid when they know that they're not. So definitely his most struggle placement. When it comes to relationships, this is, again, this is why he's, especially with cancer there, this is why he's going to like that little back and forth, that little, you know, sort of feisty energy that's not technically feisty. It's more like poking. Um, this is why he'll struggle with, like, letting go of um people that he's interested in venus it's like i like you i don't know if i can let you go like i'm really emotionally invested and i don't know why and this will slip under like he won't realize that he has emotions until it's too late like he's not going to notice it at all and that'll piss him off too because moon and virgo notices everything but that venus and cancer will slip up and he won't notice a goddamn thing and he'll be like i always notice everything how did i not notice that was happening that is his soft spot his venus and cancer is a soft spot you will see james charles grow up to be someone that nurtures young talent venus and cancer mars and libra moon and virgo he's gonna nurture young talent um 100 it's gonna take him a while obviously he's gotta enjoy his career but it, it'll happen um mars and libras also i've noticed a lot of them end up especially with prominent Libra placements, but I think for him, a lot of them end up with people who benefit them, uh, energetically speaking. So it's like, 
um, you can do this for me or you can help me here. I've seen a lot of people who like date famous people, like famous people who date other famous people have placements like this or people that like, you know, want their relationship like in the public eye or anything like that. I've seen that happen too. Um, so that is something to keep an eye out on him uh, for. And I also think it makes sense. Again, Libra is a sign of partnerships, relationships, and even marriage. So it makes sense when you see something like that and you see all these boys that are trying to like use him, whatever. It makes sense. Um, now, Jupiter is an Aries. So um, this is a small thing I'll mention. Jupiter is luck and expansion. So it's a very small thing when it comes to the sign it's in. Um, for me, I've just noticed Jupiter and Aries are usually people who benefit from bouncing around, um, acting first and thinking second. It totally makes sense as to why he's been able to get away with a lot of the stuff that he's been able to get, with, get away with. Not that they're necessarily bad, but I'm just saying like him being reckless, he does benefit from it. Jupiter, Aries is kind of reckless, doesn't think things through, is chaotic, bounces around. So what that means is like when he does do some of the things that aren't, you know, sort of thought through and that we talked about some of those issues, that's why he kind Kind of benefits from it and that's why he kind of doesn't falter jupiter is kind of like a safety net or a safety blanket and like kind of like it's okay you're supposed to kind of figure it out aries is the first it's the child so acting childish kind of benefits from it because he's learning jupiter is like you're gonna learn what it means to be a person and so we're gonna teach you by kind of protecting you a little bit when it comes to your impulsive reckless childish action actions um okay um, and so the last thing I'll say about his particular chart is his North Node. His North Node's in Leo. I'm not shocked. Leo, right, girl? Life path, Leo. Makeup, Libra is great for that too, but makeup, you know, hair, nails, looking somewhat, some type of way, creativity, you know, videos, film, TV, you know, on screen, you know, entertainment, Leo, 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 Leo. Problem with North Node and Leo is they're prone towards ego, okay? So we're aware of this. I'm sure he's aware of it now. Um, but they can sometimes get too full of themselves. Sometimes they can be too focused on themselves. Sometimes they don't see everyone around them. Sometimes they don't realize that it's about the production, not the star. Um, and that is a process that they're learning. They learn about healthy amounts of ego. You can't learn to have a healthy amount of ego if you don't become egotistical and then get knocked down. It doesn't. You're not going to just naturally know the way to go. Like you're going to cross the line to know that the line exists. And so that's kind of where they're that, what they're learning about. Um, again, naturally suited toward television. If you have a North and a Leo, creativity, art, painting, drawing, you know, anything on stage. Northern Leo just wants the approval and the appraise of the audience. They want to entertain. I have seen people with Northern Leo who works like a regular nine to five job. However, they're always the person that people come to for entertainment. They're the person that has the great stories, the person that, they, that has all the parties, the person that they go to at work that's entertaining when they're, you know, venting or the one that's just like popular. For some reason, everyone just thinks they're popular. Like, why are you popular? I don't know why you're the most popular person here. People gravitate towards you. That's Leo energy. They are very bright. It's the sun. People are literally revolving around the sun. The earth revolves around the sun, so people are going to revolve around you because, again, sun, earth, you know, everyone is just enamored by that light they have a special light they have a special unique you know sense of, of, of ability to draw people in um and they are known for flash and pizzazz uh so they're supposed to be a little bit more flashy a little bit more pizzazz razz pizzazz razzle dazzle um you know they're not always known for being in positions of power um sometimes we have seen north and leo just like to perform so they just like that one aspect of it or whatever the case may be um Someone like him with a chart like this, he totally is going to benefit from a huge team. So if he was doing things just solely on his own, he'd get pretty far, which he did, Moon and Virgo. But he would totally hit a, a point where it's like, again, I see him being more of a, like, a, a, like being able to nurture young talent. He won't be able to do that alone. North and Leo, um, he'll have to learn to work together with other people to kind of pick up for some of the things that he lacks. So um, hopefully this is kind of entertaining and kind of described a little bit about um, – astrology and james a little bit james charles um i didn't go super in depth with everything and i only touched on certain things um but i do love astrology i think it's great to kind of understand yourself if you have any of these placements hopefully you maybe learned a little bit a little bit about yourself um and if you guys really like this i will totally do this again just let me know uh, make sure you guys put in the description of who you want me to do it on in the description in the bot in the comment section girl mm. And follow me on Twitch, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Amphrodite. Subscribe to me. And uh, until next time.
Bye, guys.